we're going to be converting this automatic Forrester SCI into a manual. Good afternoon from Okinawa, Japan, home of Okisubi. Today we're working on this 2000 model Forster STI. If you tuned in to the SF9 transformation, this is not that car. It is not deja vu. This is a different car. This is a Forster STI. The other one was not a Forster STI. It was just a standard model, but it came five speed. So when we did the six speed swap, it was completely uh, easy and straightforward. This is an automatic and Subaru for some odd reason chose to make their Forrester STIs automatic. Now, there was a very select few of uh, Forrester STIs that came manual, it was like the Type M, and there's only 800 of those made, so extremely rare. So if you have one of those, hold on to it. But for these models, for the owners who have the, um, the, the Type A's, uh, Forrester STIs that came automatic, uh, the only option is to, to convert it. And so in this video today, we're gonna be converting this automatic Forrester STI into a manual. Stay tuned. Here we are, we're sitting inside this 2000 model Forrester STI. Now this is the SF5 model, so way different than the SG9s, the Forrester STIs that start in 2003. Those have Brembo's and six speed and whatnot. This SF5 STI is equipped with four pot front calipers and some decent looking interior. So if you notice here, it's got the STI seats with the red stitching that continues into the e-brake handle and this unfortunate automatic shifter right here also has a momo steering wheel and then on the cluster sti is also badged there this is a really nice car but unfortunately is missing one thing and if you look down here it's missing a third pedal it's an automatic but we're going to change that today so we'll start by getting it in the shop jacking it up jacking it up and removing the automatic transmission uh, we will then come to the interior, remove all the interior uh, shifter stuff the, that goes to the automatic transmission. Fortunately, this is a 444 final drive, so we will not have to remove the rear diff, so that makes things really easy. Um, the biggest obstacle will be the wiring, just to trick the neutral position sensor and just the pendle switch, um, reverse lights and, and whatnot, and, but we will walk you through all that wiring because that's the most important part, right? Mechanical that mechanical aspect is pretty straightforward but for the electronics we will walk you through it so stay tuned for that let's get it in the air with the car backed into the shop and jacked up and secured on jack stands we are now going to be removing the transmission to gain access from the top we're going to have to remove the intercooler um, and also the downpipe, so there's a heat shield that's pretty uh, ridiculous. A uh, thousand bolts holding that thing on, so remove the heat shield. Once that victory is accomplished, then you'll remove the downpipe. And then that'll give you access to the top of the transmission. There we'll get the bell housing bolts started and taken apart. Someone simultaneously will be on the bottom taking the bell housing bolts so that they can reach from the bottom as well. Uh, we'll wait to unbolt the cradle until we have all those bolts and a jack underneath to support it. But we try and keep the jack out of the way so that we can be under there comfortably. We're already laying on our back so we don't want to be under there uh, with too many things in the way. This is an automatic transmission. So it has, instead of a, uh, a pin that holds in the fork for the clutch, we have to remove the actual torque converter bolts. And so there's an access that we'll show you as soon as we have the intercooler and everything out of the way, uh, we'll show you the removal of the torque converter bolts. It's the, the most different thing that you have to really pay attention to when removing a transmission if it's not manual. Okay, so we're gonna rock this. All right, so now we are ready with the intercooler off and the downpipe just about there. Heat shield is ready to come out too. 
we are now ready to remove the bolts that go to the torque converter. And so if you look right here, there's a little access cover here. You can just pop it out of the way. And then inside the hole, let me get a flashlight, make me see a little better. So here you can see inside the hole, the bolts for the torque converter. Here's one right here, they're 12 mils, and there's only four of them. So with the uh, ratchet here in the front rotating the actual engine, um, we'll actually be able to use this to hold the engine as well, put pressure on it while we remove the bolts. So we use this fancy tool right here, it's a 12 point, I wish it was six point, uh, but the, the torque on these aren't that, that high, the, uh, the torque on the bolts, so. Yeah, so anyways, with the imposition, just, oh, here we go, you gotta change the ratchet direction to hold it for yourself. And just break it loose. Like that right there. And then it's pretty, after that, that initial torque, it's pretty hand tight. And then just remove it. Be careful, I mean, because the transmission's coming out, it doesn't really matter if we do drop them inside the bell housing, we can retrieve them pretty easily. Putting it back in though, you wanna be careful. Thankfully, we are not putting an automatic transmission back in. All right, we got to the second bolt. Same story. Break it loose, hand tight. And so once all these bolts are removed, the torque converter is still pulled up tight against, these, against the flywheel. And so uh, because the flywheel is pulled up tight against the torque converter, the torque converter, uh, see, the torque converter tends to try and come out and stay with the pressure plate or the flywheel, my apologies, the flywheel, and then all the fluid pours out and it makes a huge mess. So after these bolts are removed, we'll take a screwdriver and pry against the torque converter and then rotate the engine and pry and then rotate the engine and pry until we can get the torque converter to rotate freely and not be connected to the flywheel anymore. Okay. All right, so now those are done. Take the, oh, it did it immediately. Oh, wow, yeah, that's the easiest I've ever had to separate. It went right back into the transmission, slid on that input shaft. Great, okay, so now that's done. We're still working the, the bolts around the bell housing. Still removing the, the down pipe, but it be, won't be too long for us out. Okay, hold on. Let it down some more. Okay, now push. It's on the axle. The the it's, it's not touching. Yeah. Push it down. down. Mm -hmm. And then push it down, push it forward as you let it down. Good. Okay, alright, 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 alright. All the right. way down. Alright, now we just gotta jack it up two feet. Yeah, get it out. Mm -hmm. Here, get So here it is, automatic transmission from the SF5 and then the 5-speed that's going in. If you take a look at the automatic transmissions, they're actually uh, very similar in the 6-speed size. So the 6-speeds, they look uh, very similar to this in their body and their, 
in the way they bolt up to the uh, to the engine. This five speed uh, is the 444 final drive. It's going to work well with the rear diff. Um, the only real thing that we had to work out there's two major issues at this point that we got that we had to figure out. One was the cradle. And so the, the, the cross member that goes underneath this transmission is special. Um, the SF5s are in all forcers, the engines sit lower. So we couldn't just throw a, a, no, a normal five speed cross member up because it would have slammed the transmission into the, into the linkage and all that and it wouldn't have, it wouldn't have worked. So uh, we would have had to have made some spacers or in this case uh, located and found a uh, cradle from an SF5. Because the engine sit lower, the cradle needs to have spacers. It will also put the transmission lower. So that was one hurdle. Second hurdle, just like we've already kind of mentioned, uh, the wiring aspect. The speed sensor on normally on five speeds and normally all manual transmissions, they sit uh, right up in here, and then that uh, they sense the the spinning of the gears inside, and then sends that signal to the ECU, which sends it to the speedometer, and everything is good and dandy. However, for this automatic transmission, it is missing. Uh, this pos the position or the spot where the speed sensor goes so that is something we're gonna have to figure out um, the videos we've watched online they were pretty straightforward with the rewiring of all this stuff but we we're gonna have to figure this one out but while we research that uh, we'll be removing all of the the automatic transmission cooling lines and everything from the car clean it up really well we're also going to be installing an auto, uh, a aftermarket radiator in this car um, and so doing away with all the transmission cooler stuff. So now that this one's out, we'll prep, remove all the transmission lines, hard lines from the car, uh, and get ready to install the aftermarket. While Kevin is trying to figure out the wiring concerns with the speed sensor. Um, I'm just gonna keep moving forward. So preparing the engine to receive the clutch and whatnot. The stock automatic uh, flywheel's gotta come off. Um, there's a 14 millimeter bolts that hold it to the crank. We'll check out the, the rear main seal and all of those other seals back here, make sure nothing's leaking, everything's good. Um, and then we'll install the new clutch that's going on the car and prepare the transmission with the throw out bearing and everything uh, just so that once we have the wiring all kind of squared away we can start uh, installing it so not that much you have to do removing the stock flywheel installing the five speed flywheel installing the five speed clutch using the clutch alignment tool using making sure to use loctite on all the bolts using grease when installing the uh, throw out bearing yeah that's pretty much it. A few things that I forgot to mention about a transmission manual swap is that you need uh, to include a clutch pedal. So in the automatics, if you saw the beginning of the video, there's the gas pedal and then a ginormous brake pedal, right? Well, that's got to come out. That assembly has to come out and be replaced with the uh, manual transmission style pedals. So you have the gas pedal, a smaller brake pedal, and a small clutch pedal, along with the uh, slave cylinder, the master cylinder and the slave cylinder that has to be also installed in the car uh, so that there's hydraulics for the clutch system. So that's gotta be installed and bled. We figured out a couple workarounds on the wiring. We'll go in, into detail a little bit more once uh, they're finalized and then we can show you them uh, at, in work. But you have to figure out the neutral position switch, right? Uh, in an automatic, normally when you put the car if you start the car and then put it in neutral and um, put it in neutral and then try and take the key out, you're not able to, right? Because there's a lock there. So you have to figure out how to trick the car into letting you take the key out in all circumstances, right? So there's some wires you need to jump there. You also the reverse switches. Uh, Kevin was able to find in the main harness um, uh, two connectors that you would jump to be able to get the reverse lights to work once you uh, put it in reverse in the. Um, in the manual transmission once it senses that signal. We have to also figure out the speed sensor, which Kevin's uh, also figuring that out too, but we will let you know all of that here shortly. So right now we're going to remove the pedals from the car. Uh, a lot, a pretty simple, pretty easy setup, and then install these uh, in its place, and then we will start bleeding things. 
But come over here. Let me show you real quick on the firewall. The, it's cr crazy that Subaru does this. Um, even if it's an automatic transmission, they still have the holes drilled in the firewall for uh, it, it, just in case you were to do some type of manual swap or just because they're generating this from the factory. Trying to save some money. Yeah, saving some money and they're just stamping these firewalls out from the factory, but you have the holes already for like the slave cylinder, I mean the master cylinder for the clutch, which is really cool. So that's gonna help us a lot. And then for the brake stuff, everything will stay here, stay the same, and we will be able to bolt it all in place. Same two at the bottom of the car, if you saw on the automatic transmissions, they only have the rear subframe, or sorry, the rear cross member for it, but it has the holes in the bottom of the car for the manual transmission stuff. Really cool, really cool. Makes our, makes the mechanical aspect of the swap really simple. Uh, what I ended up doing was I followed which ones are the neutral position and which one is the reverse lights switch. So on this portion, it is a green and white and green. And what I did was I ran those to the two that are going to the reverse light that I showed you earlier. This one is the neutral position that is gonna be going to the ECU. So if you look at here, the, it's a black one. So from this black connector here, there is a green, uh, a, like a light green and a yellow, and then a black one. Okay, if you go here, light green and yellow with black, if you follow it, you can actually unplug this, connect it to here, and you can actually do the connector uh, continuity test to the ECU, and you'll find out that this is the neutral position sensor going to the ECU, and uh, this, green and white one is a common ground one that goes through the, the, the harness inside the bolt harness, right? So what I have done is I've cut this off and I'm making it into this connector so that I can just plug this into the OEM harness. All this is gonna work. This last one is a common ground. So I'll need to run a wire from inside the car to here and I'll probably put like a butt connector on there. I wanted to keep it as OEM as possible. I was gonna try to pin it in, but I don't wanna cut any of the OEM harness. The owner doesn't plan on going to automatic again ever, but um, just in case, I would really like to not touch anything on those main connectors just to keep it factory and then uh, make it still a plug and play for a five-speed swap. But yeah, that's how it goes. So again, we have these two. The black and if you're doing a, a SF5 JDM, you probably down to the colors will be the same. But the these two go to the reverse light switch, which is the white one. The neutral position is going to be this one goes to the ECU, but there is not a common ground that I have found yet on the OEM harness that uh, you can just use. That would have been really cool if there was a common ground on that harness going to this automatic transmission. I would have been able to use these and literally create an OEM uh, plug and play harness for this. That would be cool too, huh? To sell those, just like a plug and play harness for those automatic to five speed guys. But hey, that's my retirement plan. Let me get that this is your retirement plan. All righty. So here it is. We went to go start the car and it wasn't working. <laughs> so um, you cannot wire an automatic like a five speed. Um, you have to th make it think that it's in neutral for you to be able to start the car. Uh, basically, this one and this one needs to connect together. Um, another option that you could do is you can actually run these two to a clutch switch inside the car and have it that way. Um, we're just going to jump it right here. We rewired the connector that we made. The, the reverse lights work fine. That worked out great. But these two, I added another pin here. Um, and then I will crimp and, and shrink wrap that. But basically on the opposite side, it's just connecting those two. So the car will think that it's in neutral all the time. Um, we're gonna run it that way and see if we have any check engine lights. But if not, um, that's what we've seen a lot of people do on the internet. So we're gonna run it that way. All right, so when you push the brakes, there's a switch that goes, turns on. 
uh, for your automatic lever to move and it also releases the key. So we had to jump that there. It's pretty obvious. There's a little switch inside there. When you put it in park, you can actually see it um, engage the switch. We just literally jumped it. So as soon as you turn it on, it's always activated. And then we have uh, first start here. Let's check it out and see. Alright, so this is the wiring section of the video. Originally, we tried to wire it up like a 5-speed, where the neutral position switch is ran with the actual 5-speed uh, gear. Logically, that would make sense. Um, logically, for the ECU and the ABS system, it does not. Because the transmission, when you put it in park or it's in neutral, your neutral position sensor jumps to the starter and you can actually start your car. So we did the wiring, we tested it out and the car wouldn't even turn over crank or nothing. So we were like, okay. And um, so you're gonna have to jump the neutral position and the, the starter wire, right? So there's a, a jump that you have to do. And then there's a brown and a green. I don't know if it's gonna be the same for the, your application, but the brown and the green out of doing so many wiring harnesses um, they just look really familiar and those go to the dashboard side of the harness when I'm doing a merge So I just knew that that was going to be the reverse light switches So we jumped those to test it out and sure enough it is if you want to come look over here um, On the Forester the SF there are two connectors. There is a, a from the engine harness side Try to get a little bit closer There is a yeah, if you're looking at it from the engine harness you are going to see a white one and a black one. The white one is the only thing that you're gonna to have to mess with, okay? So there is a brown and a green one, brown and a green one right there on this right-hand side. Those two wires will go to your reverse light switch on the five-speed. This white one and then this white and red one, they're all on the same side right here. You need to jump those. So if you look on the opposite side here, I have just used the original connector and I put these two here um, and I've jumped that so it'll start and then I put the other two really hard sorry for the angle guys the uh, other two are going to the reverse light switch now the speed sensor the speed sensor was the most um, I guess difficult task um, because the automatic stuff, what it does is the speed sensors are actually ran in the transmission. The automatic transmission has a reluctor sensor in the back of it, um, two of them actually, and it goes into the ABS system. So then the ABS system converts that signal and displays it to the uh, Forester's dash and ECU. So we had to figure out how to run it. I was actually worried for a second because I was like, well, how is this going to even, even work? You can't just, so for my legacy, um, it's actually ran through the speed sensors, like a newer style one, canvas style setup. It's actually ran through the speed sensors. So I don't have to worry about anything on the transmission for speed sensors. The only time I have to worry about any issues with speed sensors on like a newer model is if you don't have your ABS, um, lines hooked up into the into the system but anyways for the foresters when you remove the transmission and you remove that that sensor for the speed sensor and it's a two wire sensor and it goes into the abs you cannot run a speed sensor or a two wire speed sensor or try to figure out the reluctant style set the only way that you're going to be able to do it is you have to install a three wire sensor into the five speed and out of those three wires you have a ground you have the positive and then you have a signal. That signal needs to go to your, your dash and your ECU. So here's a, a wire diagram. If you go on the internet, you're gonna find one diagram that looks really good, but it's for a Forester. I was using Dylan's car 
to look at the pinouts and I was doing continuity tests and this is the setup. So if you are looking at the clip like this, if it plugs into the ECU, another cool little tip thing on a newer car, TGV connectors and whatnot is the same as a speed sensor connector. So you can reuse those. But if you're looking at it just like this, this left one is your signal, right? So this one needs to go to your dash and your ECU. This middle one is the ground and it needs to be a common ground that goes to your, I, you would, I wouldn't recommend just grounding it normally. That's not how the OEM ECU setup works or uh, speed sensor setup works. This one actually goes into, it's a green and white one on the newer models, but for example, your diagnostics connector, I'll show you in a bit when we get into the car, how I did it. And then this one needs to go to ignition on. Um, so yeah, let's go into the car real quick. And as you see, what we're gonna do real quick is we're gonna start the car. It's all jacked up on all fours, right? Just a second. Seven high, cold start. Just real quick, as you can see, we have operational speed sensor. All right, everything is good. I just shifted and it jumped up right there, okay? No check engine light. The reason why the ABS light is on is because again, the original speed sensor goes into, it's actually this module right here, this one on the bottom. Um, I'm gonna have to figure out a way to mount it because that's where this is mounted to where the clutch pedal is Once we put install a clutch pedal, this is not gonna be um, Yeah, we can't mount that into the OEM location. So I'm gonna try to get a decent angle here but Let's try to Get I'm gonna take this real quick All right, so this is the unit you're gonna have to do continuity tests and whatnot. This is all temporary, so forgive me for the, I'm gonna probably get another comment and be like, please tell me you didn't leave it like this. I never leave them like this. This wire right here originally went to second row, looking at it from right here, just in case if someone happens to work on the exact same car. You should still do a continuity test anyways, but the second wire, and it's going to one, two, three, four. So the second, the middle row, uh, row uh, one, two, three, fourth wire, right? So what I did was I, I stuck the, um, the probe in here and then I actually went through every single wire on the cluster until I found continuity and I already knew where the pinout was on the ECU. So I went there too. Um, well, actually I, I I'm sorry. I plugged that into the ECU cause that was the only one I knew where it was, where the speed sensor, um, signal goes to the ECU. I have a pinout. And then I needed to find which wire was here and which one wire was here. Um, doing it right here, that wire already goes to because this is the this is the device that converts the signal and it sends to your dash and to your ECU. If you clip this wire right, that wire is going to the dash and to that to that uh, ECU. This wire is the signal wire going to the ECU. Okay, the ground I have connected this way here right to um, the same common ground system right that you use to do like your check engine lights when you connect these um, also for your diagnostic uh, connectors on this side and then there's these two pins up here that you use also but it's just a common ground um, that you need this to go to the ignition on is temporarily just plugged into here as i was testing it out this one right here that turns on your fuel pump relay is also ignition on i'm going to splice that into here and uh we'll be good to go but yeah as you saw the abs light is on because the speed sensor that was in the automatic transmission is now unplugged so it's going to say you have a speed sensor trip right so you would either have to remove the bulb um or just deal with the abs light we're going to remove the bulb because you need it off for um vehicle inspection purposes and whatnot um yeah to try to figure that out you may have to you, may, you could probably put some type of like resistor inside the setup to try to get that one removed but yeah no check engine light so everything is uh that's the wiring aspect of it. Oh, and then also we did cover it in another one, but when you push 
uh, when you put the car into park, that's how you can remove your, um, that's how you will remove. So this little connector right here, when you connect these two, it's like if you put it in park and you can get your key out your ignition and you can also, um, yeah, that's pretty much what it, what it is for to be able to get your key out your ignition. But yeah, that's the wiring aspect of it. Hopefully it helps. All right, so the unit on the inside of the car, the reason why I kept that plugged in, uh, the TCU unit or whatever it is that controls the ABS and automatic was because there was a check engine light. Um, once we got everything working properly, that high rev was not a high rev because of a cold start. Um, doing so, a little bit more research and the automatic transmission revs higher to compensate for the torque converter. Um, I found a great link. It's for a 2.5 RS, I believe. It's for a GC8 for sure. But the location where they did the ground and the power is all through that unit. So you can unplug it. But another thing that you have to do is um, on the pin four, I'll also include a, a Forrester pin out that I actually have been using. But this right here, this green and white one, I did a continuity test to uh, the other common grounds. So you basically have to ground this pin out right here. I don't know if you're gonna be able to hear from the rain. Yeah, it's beeping there, but it's got continuity there. So this, I'm gonna sacrifice this harness. If I use this harness, most likely it's gonna be for a merge and I'm not gonna use this anyway, so I'm not worried about it. But I'm gonna, gonna actually pull this pin out and I'm gonna ground this in the forest there and then uh, unplug the unit and see how that works. But you will have to do that also. Okay, so here we are. Just You have to clip up these little pieces. You just kind of like press them up. You can use these parts right here, but they kind of go bad. So I can, you, I will actually put the little piece in here and you can actually pop it up from there. And then the pin, one, two, three, four. So I pulled a pin out from the other one and then I'll slide it in there and then I'll ground it and then I'll be back. Okay, as you can see, I have the pin grounded. Before it would rev out to, man, it was up to like 2000 just idling. Bled the system for the coolant, warmed it up, and not much changed. So let's see now where we're at now this is with the pin number four um, that the the manual identification pin grounded So now with the pin grounded and the control module underneath has to be unplugged. If you keep that plugged in, it will still rev higher. So now with the proper manual identification pin, which there is nothing inside of the automatic, you're adding a wire and grounding it to trick the ECU to think it's not, that's not even tricking. That's just the difference between an automatic and a manual is that one pin out. And then you have to unplug the control module underneath. Once you uh, disconnect the control module underneath, it'll fix your idle. And the check engine lights did not come up for the automatic transmission stuff. There you go. All right, so to the customer also wanted a radiator in his car, aluminum radiator, and the Oh, so we don't really have an option for SF5 aluminum radiators, but GC8s, you can take GC8 fans, put them on the radiator, 
And then you take this piece and you actually have to get it angled down a little bit. Um, the engine is literally like right here. So the hose, it, it hits the bottom of the um, timing. timing belt cover. So if you do it that way, it's a temporary solution. The vibration and the shaking and the rubbing is gonna eventually puncture the hose and you're gonna have a nightmare. So it's just better to get this. We cut it at an angle, we flip it upside down and then we just re-tig weld it on there and then you can get it to angle down. So we'll uh, chop it off, weld it up and show you what it looks like and then we'll uh, show you what it is in there. So if you guys have an SF5 and you want an aluminum radiator, get a GC8 radiator, put GC8 radiator fans on there Find someone that can do TIG welding for you, and that's all you gotta do. It's no big deal. The GC8 radiator is the SF5 radiator. See how it's angled down? That's what we're seeking to do. Angle, cut and angle down the bottom radiator spout on the radiator so that we can use it inside the SF5. So we are driving the car, fully swapped five speed, no check engine lights, uh, the ABS light, we just ended up pulling. The ABS unit is even different from the five speed, so you're not gonna be able to get the ABS light off um, that we could figure out. So we ended up pulling the ABS light uh, the check engine light, nothing on the check engine light. Um, we're just driving it around. I will be checking. I am looking into the uh, um, aspect of the neutral position. I have it jumped. I could, instead of jumping those wires, I could hook up a clutch switch. Um, so you have to have the clutch switch in while you try to start the car. You know, just like a normal, like a newer model. Um, I, I don't like that feature, so we'll see what happens. Um, if the check engine light comes on for neutral position sensor, then we're going to have to because then those two wires that I have jumped, one of them is the neutral position, so um, I'll have to run that into the five-speed stuff like I originally planned on doing. Now that the transmission or the ECU is tricked in, is, is in manual mode with that pinout, um, I could do that. So we'll see how this goes. Um, so far, so good. It shifts like butter, no issues whatsoever. So, um, but yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If you have any questions, shoot it in the comments. Um, have a nice day. <laughs>